Okay, welcome to part two of the chord flow connection, continuity, accompaniment style to get loosened up for a popular song or um, an accompaniment, or if you're writing a song, what I'll be showing you today will be the basis of getting a progression and putting it into effect to uh, write a song, memorize a song, improvise on a song, but it all starts with the chord flow. So if you have the book, open to page 20, that's Let's Enjoy Piano Self-Expression Method. These are uh, ideas and techniques away from the printed page, reading the keyboard. So page 20 is the cycle of fifths and all the six, two, five, ones. We're going to focus on the right side of the page, the seven chords, dominant sevens, minor sevens, major sevens. I've, I've done part one, which I focused on the triads, and I explained that with um, Over the Rainbow. We did a little uh, application. And if you a detailed ex explanation of chord flow is on page 23b. It breaks down the entire uh, idea that we're going to be doing, selecting the chords, moving the chords, establishing a foundation, and determining the melody centering position where the melody comes out. But the first step is just getting a nice continuity chord flow, and that's what we're going to work on. Page 20, if you look on the right side, you have the 6251 in the key of C major, in the key of C. And if you do fingering uh, 5, 4, or 3, doesn't matter, whatever you, I do 4, a lot of people do 3. But And you'll, your thumbs are going to butt on the major 7. But the major 7 is the closest key to the octave. The dominant 7 is one step down. That's your B flat. That's C7. This is C major 7. So that's an important to know your uh, minor 7s versus your major 7s. Uh, the major 7, the chord is major, and the, and the note is the major 7. The chord is major, and the, and the note is, is dominant 7. So that's C7. C major 7. The major 7 has a minor at the top. The dominant 7 has a diminished as the top three notes. So for now, we're just going to do match position, both in, 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 and then we'll break down the minor versus major and diminished pluralities, which are um, on page 61 and 62, if you have the book. Okay, so just match position, C major 7. A minor 7, D minor 7, G7, and this serves as a, as a good warm-up, it serves as an introduction, it serves as a, a fill, and the key is the continuity, that if you go run down the page, as soon as you're finished with C, We go to C major 7. We can change the C major 7 into C7. That will pull us to the next to the next line, the next progression, which is the key of F. The C7 will go into F. And now you're at D minor 7, G minor 7, C7. Stay in F major 7, you're going to D minor 7. Eyeball it, all white keys. Here I go, D minor 7. Keep the continuity. Now I'm going to triangle, a triangle chord, G minor 7. Here I go. And back to C7, I call it a swoop up. It starts white, three whites and a black. Try to go up to the left. Roll up, you can come down on the right, you can go up and come down, but don't stop the flow no matter what. And now we go into F major 7 again. Now we change F major 7 to F7. That'll put us into the dominant 7 of B flat. Right from here we go to B flat. Now we're at B flat major 7, G minor 7. C minor 7. And then what's next?
XF7. Seven, white, black, white, black. Same, same pattern, F minor seven, and B flat seven. And if you do that every day, your, your hands will be flowing, and that's a, a foundation for any song in, in those keys. Uh, I did over the rainbow in the key of C for the triads. I'm going to be doing the key of E flat for over the rainbow in um, as an example of the chord flow. The introduction, you can use the 6251 in the key of E flat. When the song starts on E flat, you have... Um, you can notice the sheet music. Here's the, here's the sheet music for it. And here's... Um, E flat and uh, down at the next line E flat C F B flat and here's the fill E flat C minor F minor B. it follows exactly what we just did on page 20 sometimes the chord quality will change instead of C minor they may have C7 but the pinky is still on C you're still going E to C to F to B flat to E to C to F to B flat so it follows suit and there's some variations, but you cherry pick through the entire cycle. In the middle of the, the first line is E flat seven to A flat, which is the five to one on page 20 in the key of A flat. So right there, you'll as you do the key of A flat, you'll feel that movement. E to, it's still an E to an A movement. It's still that cycle of E to A. So if I just do the the um, chord flow, I start out with an E-flat major 7. And then I would start. E-flat's the first chord. I'm going to the next chord, which is C minor. What inversion it's going to be, and I'm just going to get to C minor. Just do C minor seven, and then I'll flip it around. That's your first inversion, C minor, C minor one, C minor two. But in seven chords. You break down the top note as the top three notes as the plurality. In other words, there's a triad within the seven chord. So if I just go back to the introduction, there's E flat major seven, but the top part of a major seven is a minor. There's the G minor. So the match position is this. Extended position, you go into the plurality, which is the the uh, the chord within the uh, triad within the. Uh, uh, seven chord so it would be played usually with an octave but and just play the triad here so you have e flat here and the thumb on the third and you break down the chord that way so the chord flow on page 20 there's e flat major seven rather than match position match position would be everything both in both hands every chord every note the same in both hands same position we're going to break it down to the one to three split root. And if you have the book, 
uh, I think on page 79B, there's a, an extension chord or a one to three split. Uh, it shows you the E flat chord and then it shows the inversions, E flat major seven and the inversions of the plurality. Keep the bass as, a, uh, as an octave and roll it left to right. Then do the first inversion of G minor. You don't worry about E flat because that's in the bass. Now we go to C minor 7. A minor 7 has a major at the top. You can check page uh, 38. B, which is 7th heaven, it breaks that down, as well as uh, 61, 62, break this down as well, the plurality. And then the extension chord, the way it's written out, um, let me just see that real quick. Here's 61 and 62. It gives you an example of the chord layout. And then if you're, uh, it's a chart form, and then if you're a reader, it gives you the options it parallels whatever's on 61. An example will be on 62 on how the chord is laid out, the seventh chord. And here's the decision page I was telling you about, making decisions on the fills and the introductions, the way your hands are, the directions of your hands, etc. That's 80B. And then the extension chord and the three to one split is on 79A. I think I was correct there. The C family, showing you the major seven, the split with the plurality and the three inversions, and then the seventh chord below and the minor seven. So if we just look at 79A, C major seven, that's match position. The first measure plays E minor in the root position, then E minor first inversion, and E minor second inversion. Left hand is just doing C or the full chord or the octave, doesn't matter. But the triad that we did in part one is the top of the C major seven, depending on the melody is where you, the melody determines the position of the right hand. So if the melody is here, you would use the E minor in the first invert, in the root position. If the melody is up here, you, you flip it around. So when you're doing your continuity, and we're doing this 6251, we were doing E flat, that's right. So here we go back to E flat. And here's now three inversions of G minor, depending on knowing your triads and staying there. Don't move unless you know where you're going. Here's E, G minor. Talk it to yourself. G, B flat, D. Now first inversion, I gotta put my pinky over there. Now I have to put my third finger on the... There I go. So if I'm doing an introduction in the key of E flat, I, I could start that with match position. I can then break it down. Go to C minor seven. It's got a, a major chord, the E flat chord on the top. I can fiddle with that. Getting back, I'm jumping around a little, but it's all this it will come out in the wash here. Uh, getting back to page 79A, we have the C major seven, we have the C seven, and we have the C minor seven. So the C major seven has a minor at the top. The C dominant seven has a diminished at the three notes at the top, dominant, diminished. And the C minor seven has a major chord at the top, which is the E flat. So you can play the page across, which is uh, horizontally, or you can take the first inversion I mean the uh, uh, root position and have the root position of the E minor, C major 7, and then you can play, go vertically, C7, you're dropping your major 7 to the dominant 7, and you drop your thumb to the minor, C minor 7, and you have 
the E flat chord. So you can just weave your way through continuity of just playing it vertically. Okay, and there's another uh, exercise in the book that goes from the dominant chord, the first inversion, and drops down to the major seven, dominant seven, and a six. Beatles used that on the song Something. They went from the C to the major seven to the dominant seven. Then they went into F. The key here is continuity. So getting back to the continuity of uh, the lesson, which is the um, key of E flat and over the rainbow, applying the plurality in the... Um, in the extended position. So we had E flat. Match position, here's the plurality, G minor. Now C minor seven, which if you've done the match position, you get the idea, then you split, just put the root in the left and the other three notes in the right. You can double them if you want to, but that's the main thing, to get a C octave in the left, that's C minor 7. Now we go to F minor 7, and that was minor 7, a major chord on the top, which is A flat. And there's a 3 to 1 split uh, where you have the F in the bass and A flat in the right hand, and then A flat is moved. Because it's going to be one of those positions that you're going to need melody. Forget melody for now, just get chord flow. You're going from a C minor 7, E flat, to an A flat. So I'm, I'm eyeballing this A flat now, and F. If you don't know what you're doing, or you can't get there, just take one hand at a time. Keep it flowing. And use the left hand. E flat and G minor, C minor 7, E flat, plurality, F minor 7 and A flat, and now B flat 7, dominant 7, diminished, here's the D diminished, diminished chord is a minor, flat to 5, here's D diminished, that's, that's B flat 7, and then, then you can invert the diminished chord. Here's the straight match position introduction. And I went down, I went up with the chord, and then down, up with the melody, and down the chord. Down with the melody, up, up with the chord, down with the melody, down with the chord, down with the melody. But I'm keeping the flow. Now I can break it up. Plurality. And try to do your triads with one, two, three, because now you have your your pinky left over for the nine. Here's E flat. Here's E flat. Uh, sorry. Here's E flat major seven. Now here's your nine. E flat major nine. C minor 7, here's the 9. The 9 is 1 away from the root. And it's a minor 7 has a major on the right hand. Well, a minor 9 has a major 7 on the right hand. Same thing with F, A, A flat, put in the 9, B flat 7, B flat 9. The 9 doesn't change. The 9 is named by what 7 you have. So, if you 
Now I'm consolidating all this. This may take you a week or two, or months maybe, to get a nice flow. But just enjoy. Uh, that's why I learned all my chords, just by flowing through month after month, year after year, 30 years ago. <laughs> just over and over and over. And then I came up with songs. I wrote songs, and I did accompaniments. And I did auditions and I worked with the, in the pit band and I did solo piano. I did, it always comes in handy knowing your chords and being able to be versatile with your chords. And that's where it starts then. So and in the I did a, a, a video on Over the Rainbow a couple uh, last month and I just started in, root, in first inversion of E flat and I went up to C minor root position, went up minor 7 and went up to B flat 7 so I went up that way in my and I, then when I came to the a fill uh, I did the same thing so you can go up with chords in that direction and you can come down with melody like this going up with chord movement and down with melody and that's just putting in chord uh, chord flow continuity and chord notes I didn't put any non chord tones in to make a melody up I can go like this putting a, a six that's something different or a major seven Here is that continuity. So even when I start the song, I'm just playing E flat into C minor into G minor E flat seven. There's the E flat seven dominant seven. There's the diminished into A flat major seven. Now you don't worry about keeping perfect time just get from chord to chord and be have a continuity going seven is a B flat plurality minor seven as a major chord so then you flip the work on G minor seven work on the B flat inversions which if you do page 20 on the left side with the triad you'll get you'll get fluid fluidity with the chords but it doesn't have to be one after the other you can just stay on the B flat then go to the first inversion second inversion, then put in some non-chord tones. Is continuity if you if you're saying if he says that one more time and I'll throw something uh, yes but it's so important keep that 
keep the flow going don't worry about counting just feel it the counting will come and the song as you know the song in your head it'll come out but just keep an even flow from left to right and um, match position or extended position which you can throw in the nines So it's just something like this. Here's the triad. That's your 6251 on the left side of the page that we did in part one. So now we go to the seven chords. in extended position and then we put in the nines at the introduction Six two five one. So you have. Um, let me just get it here real quick, and then we'll wrap this. So the broken down melody is uh, the third and the fifth, and then it becomes the fifth and the seventh of C minor. and the fourth of uh, F minor and the seventh and the root of B flat so they all tie into the chord with the melody but you can add in if your hand is in a, a different inversion you can experiment with things with continuity again together once you get that continuity going then you tighten it up so you can have it in the exact rhythm or you can use augmentation to keep octave displacement augmentation bad had it you probably had tired of hearing me okay so that should really get you rolling it takes a, a while but it's a lot of fun and it's very very practical to work up a song to know your chords your people ask you what song are you playing and you say oh that's page 20 
that's the that's how it goes because that's the basis of every song put together hundred three four hundred years ago by Mr. Johann Sebastian Bach, Cycle of Fifths, and all the six two five ones they called the figured bass in those days, and that's what it all came from. But the same pattern and it's cherry picked through the entire cycle. The bass sometimes has other movements of uh, half half steps and steps, tritones, but basically half the song is going to be in the cycle, and. Uh, Chromatic is the, the half tones where something is uh, moving half steps. Like a, a quick example, Michelle. Chromatic bass line, but then it goes to the cycle here. C, then F, B flat, E flat, then, then half step down, diminished. So they're doing, they're, they're mixing it up. But half the song is the cycle. B flat, F, F, B flat, E flat. F, B flat, E flat. So that's that's all, all fifths. Okay. Thank you very much. If you have some suggestions, let me know. If you want me to do any other specific uh, um, videos, you want to take some online lessons to get you rolling on this chord flow, uh, pick up a copy of the book because it's a very innovative toolbox it's been around for over 30 years and helped a lot of people um, enjoy piano, not being frustrated by not knowing what to do with the chords and how to apply it to a song and how to get a nice solo arrangement. You can custom design your own arrangements and everything. But the chord flow continuity is the key to, the, to, the, to all music. So you're not stuttering through a song, so you're just flowing. That's the whole key. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll see you around next time.